Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is not really meant to be played solo. In fact, most of you that have probably tried the game, if you've played it with your friends, you've noticed a big difference of playing with other people versus playing on your own. Playing solo can seem absolutely impossible. It can seem like a waste of time. You can't physically deal enough damage to interact with the challenges and do the things you want to do. However, in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a very working solo strategy that you can do virtually anything in the game by yourself with. The strategy is meant to be set up in a way where you can absolutely choose chew through contracts either in the tier 2 or even the tier 3 zone on your own. While it's not foolproof, there are a lot of things that will make this uh, setting up a lot easier on yourself. I'm not going to explain how this entire game mode works if you're not familiar yet. I would definitely go and watch my ultimate guide if you don't know how any of this stuff works. However, once you're familiar with the general loop of the game, I am going to recommend a couple of different things before we make this strategy work. I'm also going to show you a guaranteed way to get some of the most important solo perks in the match every single game. Some of these are fundamental and almost required to your build and how you're going to be playing, so it is useful to know. I know a lot of solo players are hurting right now, so if this does help you guys out at all, I would just really appreciate a like on the video, and please subscribe if you're new to the channel and you want to see more Zombies content will be greatly appreciated. Before you jump straight into doing the solo strategy, I recommend you play a game before that's just a scav run, and so if you don't know what that is, this is going in with virtually nothing in your inventory, and you're only using this game to acquire the materials that you're going to use in your next game so some of the most important stuff is the stamina perk i would also probably get speed cola and juggernaut if you could manage it and also deadshot daiquiri is going to be huge but again i'll show you free methods for getting some of these perks a bit later on but let's say that you have a few things like ether tools or raw ethereum crystals something like that you can bring in the match what i would do for this solo strategy is bring in stamina up juggernaut and speed cola these are going to go a long way in helping you survive the tier 3 zone and of course Deadshot is going to help you deal more damage to critical points and it's extremely important for your damage output because fundamentally that is the problem with solo that you may have noticed is if you're jumping into even the medium threat zone it's pretty much impossible to do a lot of these contracts with the damage output that you as a solo player will have and you'll notice that just the guns just feel they don't do enough damage for your purposes here which is completely true and so using the strategy you can basically do contracts in tier 2 and if you're feeling feisty you could do some tier 3 but I'm going to show you guys exactly the easiest way to do this by yourself. Now, as far as your setup goes, after you've done your scav run, it really doesn't matter what weapon you use. But I am going to say this only bring one weapon in you're not going to use this weapon very much so don't get used to it don't put a whole lot of weight on it it's not really going to be in your inventory for all that long but just make sure you have it and include maybe none in your second weapon or have something very light like a knife or a pistol either way then bring in the most amount of perks you can and also if you're able to bring in a raw ethereum crystal or anything else that will let you pack a punch a weapon but do not use it just yet we're going to load into the game and use our perks so that we have these going and ether tools don't really matter here either you don't need to bring them in unless you want to uh, but you're again not going to be using it for very long either buy a green or a blue wall buy to do a couple contracts what we need to focus on doing is beginning the game quickly and getting 5,000 to 6,000 points as fast as we possibly can and for solo I've noticed that there's a few contracts specifically that are way more friendly towards one player the easiest one is probably going to be doing HVT this just helps you hunt down basically one giant enemy that you can kill dead and it's pretty simple to do by yourself and this is marked by this target icon the other one is going to be doing it looks like this sort of uav satellite icon this is just a holdout objective from outbreak where you just walk in this thing and survive and then the other one is going to be this pistol icon and this is defending a safe this gives you equipment as well as giving you contract completions and these are very friendly solo i would stay away from anything that involves mercs like the seismic uh, contract and also the rockets those can be a little dangerous by yourself although still doable they can take kind of a long time the point is we want to speed through these early contracts in the low threat zone as quickly as possible as to acquire about five to six thousand points at this point in the game you should have used your perks so you should have your stamina up speed cola juggernaut dead shot etc whatever you have but also if you can manage if you have your ethereum crystal again do not use it yet keep it in your inventory and at this point of having about five to six thousand we are either going to take a car or we're going to run straight into the highest threat zone 
right into the center and we're going to be looking for a wall buy and this is denoted by these pistol icons on the map they will sometimes shift around game to game but you can locate them pretty easily in these zones but once we find our wall buy we're going to start making our way towards there and go purchase one now keep in mind we're going to hope to god that it is an orange rarity weapon although sometimes i have had games where there is a green wall buy in the highest threat zone which i think is absolutely absurd and i hope gets fixed but regardless if you find an orange weapon you're going to buy it for five thousand points and once you acquire it immediately leave this zone and go back to medium threat and also you can use your raw ethereum crystal on this weapon now so you can pack a punch it to its tier one form and then by this point you can start doing contracts in the tier two zone which will grant you better rewards and also more money so you can pack a punch to tier two now at this point the game opens up to you a little bit because you theoretically should be powerful enough to handle yourself on your own in either the medium threat zone or the low threat zone high threat i still don't think you're going to be doing enough damage output to quite survive yet you need to be able to upgrade to tier three or pack a punch tier three that is but you can actually start farming these ones in the medium threat zones and i am going to recommend if you're playing solo to stick to the formula of the contracts that are friendly for this particular mode you know this being the holdouts the the stats ashes etc you again you can do these other contracts like the transports or the seismic telegraph thing but it is a lot harder to do with the mercs around or uh, some of these contracts just take forever but they will grant you different rewards as well so depending on what you're farming for specifically you may want to go in a different direction but as far as like ease of use for solo goes these are by far the most friendly ones Depending on how efficient you are, you should have at least, you know, 20, 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes to spare that you can spend just farming these tier two contracts on your own. But if you really want to go the other direction, if you want to go back into the highest threat zone and do a few of those contracts, more specifically trying to get something like the ray gun schematic, you can absolutely do that. And the way that I would go about it at this point is you need to make sure that you have 10,000 points. Uh, farming contracts through the medium threat zone which should be easier because you're getting more essence per contract completion but when you run into the tier 3 zone you're going to notice that there are these buy stations and specifically in this zone you can buy a juggernaut suit for 10,000 essence this is going to allow you to take down things like the abomination which you can get for doing an hvt contract in this highest threat zone which will grant you that potentially that ray gun schematic or pretty much anything else but the juggernaut suit is really good for these ones specifically that's pretty much the only way you're going to spend any substantial amount of meaningful time in the tier 3 zone without getting bodied or not doing anything productive. So I think this strategy is most set up for getting you powerful enough by yourself to do a lot of the things in the medium threat zones. But to make this process easier really quick, I'm going to show you how to get a couple of free perks every single game. So let's start with how to get death perception for free. Head over to this area on the map. It's near the top. It's actually sort of in the low threat zone and it's very easy to spot because of this giant tower climb all the way to the top and then once you're at the pinnacle of it jump off and use your parachute and you see these rings in front of you all you need to do is fly in between all of them and kind of split the gap once you do that you'll be given a free death perception perk that will come out of this ethereal portal i had to slow it down here because unfortunately in this game i went for it it was actually coincidentally in the ether storm which sucks uh but that's actually how you do it every single game keep in mind if you're playing in a squad this is only for one person but if you're playing solo this is probably the optimal way to go death perception is incredibly important for solo play because you can see zombies and or also loot through walls and contracts and just a bunch of things that are important for spatial awareness and map awareness in the game now let's talk about how to get free deadshot because this is crucial for dealing the maximum amount of damage that you can which again in solo is like of the utmost importance if you come over here to this church section on the map all you need to do is literally get a grenade frag or semtex something like that and throw it through this top window of the church it's that simple if you do miss the grenade or if it doesn't work the first time there's an ammo box just literally a few feet away that you can refill at and try again however as soon as you do this a portal will spawn behind you giving you a free deadshot daiquiri perk and so that is probably the second easiest one to do Deadshot, of course is obviously very key but let's talk about how to get a free speed cola which is by far the easiest one all you need to do is come over to this section of the map that's just near the border of the tier 2 zone there's this giant e 
eagle and it literally has this red arrow pointing to go up the ramp all you need to do is take a vehicle drive up the ramp and then land back on the ground and a portal will spawn behind you giving you a free speed cola it's incredibly simple to do these can be replicated every game the only problem is they're sort of far from each other so they do require some time to travel to either using a redeploy or using vehicles can make this process easier but if you're having trouble acquiring perks in game feeling like maybe you don't have enough time or it's you know b being a little bit too risky you can do this method every single game to acquire these free perks the there's a little tiny easter egg for every other single perk in the game as well but these are less important for solo play i just wanted to go over the most important ones and there's other little easter eggs and mechanics you can take advantage of as a solo player like feeding the dog uh of this dog house these pieces of meat that you may find on the ground this will make a friendly hellhound that will you know stick by your side and help you out significantly uh advantageous for solo but i would say the core of the strategy no matter what you decide to do of these peripherals is to start up a game and get a couple contracts done as quickly as possible namely the ones that are the most friendly for solo don't really worry too much about your primary weapon once you have enough points you go straight to the center get a wall buy or a mystery box to get purple or orange rarity purple is good but orange is better and then come back immediately out of there upgrade your weapon pack a punching it as soon as possible and then start farming these tier 2 contracts where a lot of the money really is going to be and if you're feeling confident enough after that you can try to break into the tier 3 zone and do a couple contracts there or you can exfil and extract the loot and goodies that you did manage to get by yourself here but i found this to be the most consistent and effective solo strategy i do think that there will be some rebalancing in the gameplay to make a lot of things more friendly for solo as the year goes on i'm confident of that but right now this should at least help you guys interact with the game outside of the low threat zones because it feels like as a solo player you hit a wall and you can't really do anything inside the medium threat zone with the damage output you have so i hope this helped if it did drop a like subscribe to the channel if you're new i'd really appreciate it and i will see you all in the next one peace